welcome back to another episode of Creative Visions TV. I'm your host, Karen Dolman, and you guys, today I have a really intriguing guest. Oh my gosh. If you're going to ask me what this guy does, I'm going to say, what does he not do? I mean, he's so, he's got so much going on, so many balls in the air. We were just chatting a few minutes before I'm bringing him on here in a second. Um, he's just got so much going on, but he does a lot of things too, and I'm really excited to bring him to you guys to end this episode. So let me tell you a little bit about him. So he grew up in western New York State, and his relatives, you guys, get this, were at the Lily Dale Spirituality Assembly. Okay, so you can see where this is going now. So this is part of his family's upbringing. He's being raised this way, so he's learning the art of mediumship and spiritual healing. Okay, this guy, like I said, he did a lot of things. So let me just give you a list of what he does. He's a psychic medium. Um, he's an author. He's written a lot of books, and he's co-authored books on ghosts, hauntings, divination and spells. Um, he's a speaker. He's a radio and uh, podcast host. In fact, he has the really cool um, show called The Black Cat Lounge. I love that show name. It's so cool. I was on it, you guys, recently. But you guys, anything with the black cat is cool to me. You guys know Panzer used to be on this show. Well, Panzer's now trans transitioned, but we still channel him. We'll have to ask our guest if he also channels animals animal spirits, you know, through the board or something. Um, he's also a paranormal investigator. You guys, he consults on many movies and television shows. You've seen him before. When you see him, you're going to go, oh, God, I know that guy. Um, he's also into historical reenactment, like with the Civil War and also with the French and Indian War. This guy does a lot of things, okay? Okay, so he scries. He reads cards. Uh, he has a lot of old collectible cards. We've shown them to me earlier. We got a treat to see these today. He does the Ouija board. Of course, who do, who do I not like that doesn't do the Ouija board? I mean, if he does the Ouija board, I'm going to like you, right? Okay, he also does table tipping. He's a photographer. He does stone tool making. He's metal detector. And he also is a cook. Okay? <laughs> So, you guys, without further ado, let us welcome our guest to the show. Let's welcome the paranormal renaissance man, Tim Shaw. Yay, Tim. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> who, are, who are you talking about? I don't know who you're talking about, Karen. Karen, that I, I, I don't know you. That buildup, I, I can't live up to something like that. Give me a break, Karen. You well, should have said, hey, that guy from Western New York that, that every so often... You know, he's he's on the freeways. He's got a little sign that says, "We'll do readings for food." That's me. <laughs> That's you. That's well, how to build? How to make you feel good about yourself? Come on. Oh well, you know, <laughs> hey, after, after this, after last week and this week, thank you. <laughs> I just say thank you. <laughs> yeah, you guys. He's been very busy, and uh, li literally, you guys. Before we sat down to film this with us today, um, he just skid into his driveway like a few minutes earlier. <laughs> And there he was popping on the camera with me. Seriously, he's busy. So, um, all right, let's let's just jump right in. We got a lot to talk about here. I want to mm -hmm. ask you. Okay, so you were raised Roman Catholic, right? And right. spiritualist tradition, right? How does that work? How did that work for you? And what happened? <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. I went to a parochial school, and they weren't happy about my summer my summer activities. That was something that's the best way I can describe it. Is like. Uh, no, don't, don't, don't say that. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. It was sort of pablum fed to me, you know, the, you know, the Roman Catholic, Roman Catholicism, you go to the school, I had the nuns, you know, and I was like, eh, it just didn't stick. Didn't make the way they taught it. Didn't make sense. Okay. You don't care. I mean, you know, how, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, now if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have still been a Catholic because there's so many, the mysticism in Roman Catholicism is unbelievable. It is. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. But of course they don't teach that in that way, or they didn't teach it then. I'll just say then, because I have, I haven't been really active in the Catholic church for probably 40 or 50 decades now. But uh, I, we would go off to visit relatives that were in the Lilydale Assembly. Right. And, uh, you know, that you know, some people go and they want to uh, read about wonders and, and miracles and that sort of stuff. I got a chance to really live that. Right, and yes. And it really stuck because uh, you would go and watch the healings and you could feel the energy. Even as a kid, you could feel the energy in the air. Uh 
we would get these read these crazy readings at the at the, at the forest uh, temple and the inspiration stump. Uh, you would get readings there uh, through gallery, and eventually, what happened because I was a kid and I got into trouble. Uh, they not enrolled. you, Tam. Can you believe this? Listen, <laughs> Karen, 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 come closer. I survived this though. I did. I survived this though. So we won't go any further. I was like, you guys, I, I actually know Tim. We met in person in 2019 at Michigan Paracon. He's funny. He's re he's really funny. It's going to be hard for me to get through this without laughing, okay, you guys? <laughs> but, you know, uh, they enrolled us in Lyceum, which is a spiritualist Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And holy crap, the stuff that he would, we were learning. Uh, it was all interesting. And right around then was the that dawning of that new age. And it was like 72, 73. I'll say 1972, 73. So people hey, are... that's when I got saying, my first Ouija board was in 73. Oh, man. <laughs> that was a good year. It was a great year. We didn't... Now, they didn't... Now, they didn't allow us at that time mm -hmm. to use tools. That's right. Let's talk and about except, that. Except for seance. That was a whole different story. So uh, we used a polished table. Yes or no answers with a with a shot glass or a wine glass. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it was amazing. But what we learned there was really something that uh, that I keep in me. And mm. like their church services, they have message work in their church services. And I remember, Karen. I think we talked about this, but I remember a, a gentleman standing up there, and I was a little kid. I'm standing, you know, off to the <laughs> side. He was talking, and a second voice was coming out of like a solar plexus out of his chest. And there were distinct voices. Two different voices at the same time? And this is back what? in the 70s. So there's none of this micro cassettes and all that little stuff that we can run into the problems nowadays. Oh, yeah, right. So uh, I'll never forget that. And then they had transfiguration wow. yeah. where yes. you would go, and the, they, they would have an open spirit cabinet. And the medium would go into meditation, and they would have two mediums on the outside of the cabinet and acting as batteries. Everybody was, you know, kind of focusing in on these two mediums. And all of a sudden, the guy's face would change. Mm -hmm. And the nose would get bigger, or the hair would change. Face, masculine features would, would change into feminine features. Mm -hmm. And it was encouraged for people to shout out if they saw something. So you would see it, and like seconds later, somebody else would be shouting it out, you know? This was the stuff that I saw, and I was a kid, you know? Wow. It, it was just amazing. And it, I, even though, I, you know, for a time, I, and I'll say in my lifetime, it's really a short period of time, it was like a sex, drug, and rock and roll type <laughs> thing that went on, like, like when I turned 18, you know? But for a time, I mean, I'll be honest with you, even when I wasn't practicing, even when I wasn't really out there trying to do anything, it was still part of me, and I still researched it. I still visited Lily Dell, even my rel even though my relatives had already, you know, most of them had passed away or or moved away. I still went, and even to this day, I still find a wonderment when I go there. Uh -huh. And every and people ask me, how come you don't teach there? You know, how come you're not a registered medium there? Well, I was asked to be a registered medium, and I, you know what, I I. I it's tough for me to say, yeah, I want to do something like that, especially when I, you know, in this day and age, you got to have a job, you know. Right. You got to have, you, you got, you got to put food on the table. That's right. And uh, and actually, we had my wife and I had actually looked at a house. We had thought about buying a house down there in the in the uh, enclave. I'll be darned. But, uh, the other thing is, is I didn't want to teach there because it's still magical to me. And it's no, it's just, it's not just a destination for me. It, I go there and my whole energy changes. I can feel myself mm. grounding out. I feel really like I'm I'm renewed. And I'm afraid that if I go and I teach there, I'm going to lose that. It's all of a sudden now I'm a, you know, well, you know what I mean. At going to conferences, you know what you know the term on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on the other side of the table. I still want to be, you know what? I don't want to pull back the the, the, the drapes and see the, the, you know, the wizard <laughs> behind there, you know, playing around with all those mechanics and stuff. I want to still be out there and just relax, enjoy. And once in a while, I actually even learn something. So that's, that's why I don't, you know, I'm still not, one of these days I still might. I, I, you know, I'm going to say never say never. I'm going to say I could see you doing that. 
Um, but but you know I I didn't go I've not gone to Lilydale but I've gone to Casa Dega right, down in Florida. Florida and I and there's another spiritual camp I can't remember the name of it now but it's in San a, Diego. There's but, one, uh, there's one in uh, Indiana, Camp Chesterfield, and, there, and I think there's still one up in Maine and I know out west there's a couple. Do you know what? Yeah, do you know the one in, near San Diego? I, you know what? I can't remember the name of it, but either. I do know people that have worked there. And I went there one time with a girlfriend, but um, I went to the one in Casadega, and I really enjoyed it. I was there for a couple of days and did a reading and some stuff. It was great, you guys. You walk <laughs> to their homes, you just knock on the door, and you do a reading, and you go to their services. Um, yep. It's great. So if people haven't gone there to Lilydale, go check it out, or Casadega, the big ones. Did, did you um, know that Lilydale is on Lake Casadega? And do you know that Casadega is on Lake Lilydale. Shut <laughs> up. Are you serious? Yeah. I've never even made that connection. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That, did they, they did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Obviously. You, you think? <laughs> he, do, uh, well, I don't know. You Some strange things do happen. Now, you guys, okay, so I got to talk talk to Tim now. I got to ask him about some of his Civil War. His, his, so, so, to me, the spiritualism and the Civil War, they kind of go hand in hand. Spiritualism yeah, cropped up 1848. So let's talk about that that marriage between the two of those. You know what? Spiritualism almost died out. It was just another one of these religions because in what they called along the canal, the Erie Canal from Albany to Buffalo, New York, is called the Burnover District. It was a lot of zeal, a lot of, you know, all these different religions were there trying to fight each other to, to get converts. And they had all the, you know, the, the tent services, they had barn services. <laughs> and along that way, you know, you have the birth of spiritualism in Hydesville, New York, which is not that far off the Erie Canal. But you also have uh, Joseph Smith receiving the golden tablets from the Angel Moroni on Hill Camorra in Palmyra, That's which right. is literally 20 minutes drive down the road. You have the Millerites that now are the, are, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists, and those were that was a, uh, a sect that was like preparing for the end of the world. And then you also have the Oneida community, where here's my Anita spoon. I always have a, a, an Anita spoon with me. Nice. Uh, <laughs> spoon because, bending. And that, was, and, and that was actually a free love community uh, where everybody was, it was a group marriage. Everybody was married to each other. Oh. Uh, you had the Shaker communities, you had Quaker communities. So there was so much going on. And it almost died out. But when the American Civil War happened, so many people were dying. Mm. And, in t you know, there are some villages that lost, like, 90% of their, their young men. And we lost the myth of the good death. The good death, of course, is why, you know, dying at home, surrounded by all your loved ones. Now people were dying of everything on the battlefields. They were dying in hospitals. They were dying in POW camps, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, plagues and all this sickness would sweep through these, these regiments and just kill these people off. So... There was nothing, sometimes there wasn't even a photograph left. And they needed that closure. Yeah. And spiritualism actually gave them that closure. And now my great-great-grandfather fought with the 105th Pennsylvania Volunteers. Fought, uh, he uh, enlisted in uh, 1862 and fought throughout the war. Wounded once. And wow. uh, here's, the, here's his belt buckle. And this would belong to uh, his, actually his granddaughter's. Now, I've seen this before, and, you guys. He showed it to me, and I said, you've got to show that to everybody here. I wanted you guys to see this. This is amazing. These are, this was left to me. And you'll see, this is his belt, actual belt buckle from the Civil War, and you see a Confederate bullet that's lodged in it. That's how close my, my lineage came to not being around, because that bullet, had it been like a fraction off, would have been a belly shot, would have severed the uh, intestines, and he would have, he would have, eventually died. And, that is um, amazing. You guys, isn't that cool? We're thinking like 1864 that happened. Okay. We're okay. thinking, yeah. We don't know. But what was neat about that was the fact that when I did some genealogy, I found that his daughters, two of them, were spiritualists. Wow. And they, they joined in 1880. And that was like during the golden age of spiritualism when it was starting to really grow and and, you know, churches were all over the places, and home circles were all over the places, and it was actually, I mean, it was spreading across the world. I mean, mm -hmm. it first it hit England, and then it went into Europe, it was Australia, and, you know, even now, I mean, you know yourself, I mean, 
You go across the pond to Australia, they take their spiritualism freaking serious. So does the UK. Yeah, over here is like, you know, sort of like, well, you know, I always, I just, this is how I, this is how I piss off, like, different pastors in the spiritual community. <laughs> I say over here in the United States, this is like, this is like the fast food of spiritualism. <laughs> I say, if you want to get serious, you go across the pond to an Arthur Finley, Finley College. Right. I mean, dude, I mean, that, that, that's what you do. But it is an amazing, it's an amazing thing, and it gives hope to people. Uh, what I love about it is the fact that it kind of pushes the envelope a little bit. Uh, it goes and it, it spiritualists believe, have believed in vibrations and frequency and all that years and years and years before it was really like common knowledge. And it just made sense. And it gives, you know, it gives hope to all of us that there's something beyond, right. you know, what we're doing here, you know, even though that, listen, even though that you're like, Absolutely fantastically gorgeous. You're effervescent. You're iridescent, as always, may I say. Wow. But. That's a lot. <laughs> but hey, hey, listen. At least we know that our best days aren't, like, behind us. You know what I mean? There's always, this is, you know, listen, we, we both look resplendent right now. But, you know, we might even look better on the other side. Listen, this is why I have Tim on here, okay? I, I just paid him a little bit of money to say that. <laughs> And never a dull moment with Tim, for sure. Well, okay, so let's <laughs> let's talk about this spiritualism. You said they didn't use tools, and now you kind of can. What what was that shift? How did that how did that happen for you, well, and also happened, for the church? What happened was there was so much fraud yeah, okay. later on, and I and I grew up in the I I again I piss off pastors and I piss off some hardcore people within the different churches. Because I say there's a golden age of spiritualism, and then there's the golden age of spiritualist fraud. Uh, well, and, I would say that's true, though. And I and I grew up uh, at the end of it. I saw the billet readers that you know had mm. the, the specially folded cards. Uh, I I know how to cold read a person, and that's why. <clears throat> excuse me. That's why I think I'm a good instructor because I can check. I know. When somebody's cold reading somebody else, or you know what they're looking at, or you know trying to pick up visual cues, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's 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 probably a half dozen tricks that I saw personally when I was growing up. Oh, that, okay. And, yeah, and you know, I mean, and it can be miraculous. And the hard thing to swallow for me, and I don't have a problem with people that hate readers and stuff, because so many there are there are still a few out there. That go and and will uh, to me they're they're just like scavengers. They're out there trying to go and get money for the, for a person's grief. And, uh, yeah, that's that hurts my heart. And that and there's been a lot of people that have done that. And you know, I mean, Karen, even you know, we talked about like I, a deck of cards that I use to read yes. called the Survivor's deck. I never if. I think feel that something is a uh, crisis reading. I will never charge. I don't care. I won't charge. Uh, I'll, I don't care if I get backed up on my like if I get my dance you know my dance card is <laughs> is filled. I don't care. I, I I won't go and I won't move on until I can work with that person to get them out of wherever they are, and maybe even do some kind of contact work, something to help that person. And that's what it's all about. And a lot of people don't get that, you know. A lot of people only see the, you know, sometimes the, you know, super fantastic side or the really nasty side. I see. And and people don't people don't see that, you know. People people just you know they see what's on TV, uh, and they hear what like a lot of like skeptics and and other people say about uh, readers, and you know. It, and, and to go along with that, when it comes to charging, let me just let me just get that out of there, Karen. Karen, let's just pull, get that I'm out of the way. Out, pulling my ace out, baby. Uh, what it is is I remember when I was a kid, and there's a hotel in Lilydale called the Maplewood, and you can't like on Friday, Saturday nights when I was a kid, you couldn't sit up there like rockers, and they have this fantastic wraparound porch. Mm. And when I was a kid, you kids could not sit up there. That was reserved for registered mediums and visiting mediums only. Hmm. But it was the greatest education that I could have ever had 
to help me in mediumship. Because these guys would be rocking, these women would be rocking, they'll be smoking camels and, and <laughs> palm malls and pipes and, you know, and cigars. And I always remember this guy, and I thought he was really old. He's probably, he was probably younger than me right now when he said this. Oh! Story, which, which How our just, perspective <laughs> changes as we get older. <laughs> it really, but he was, he was sitting there rocking, and he had this walrus mustache. Oh, you remember this walrus wow. mustache, you know, big old tanker on him, big stomach on him. And he looked down at me, and we, were, like, we weren't even allowed to, like, to sit on the, at that time, even to sit on the, like, the steps. We had to <laughs> kind of sitting off to the side. And uh, he looked at me, and he said, boy, he said, let me tell you something. He said, what you're learning here is to be an addition to your life, but it's not to be your life, so make sure you go out there and get a job. And, Interesting. You know, and, and to me, uh, you know, and I have no problem. With, I have no bitch with uh, professional mediums and stuff. But what he wanted me to, what I think he wanted to convey to me was, you have to be part of the real people. You have to be yeah. part of people that, are, that you're going to serve. And if you're going to be a medium, and the whole bottom line is to be of service to people, and you have to be that, you know, the inner, you have to be that little middleman between spirit and that person. Right. Uh, the whole idea is that, you really should go and understand the people that you're that you're reading and you're giving this to. So go out there and just be a regular person. Because I've worked for I've worked for mediums and psychics that couldn't go out, uh, like couldn't go shopping during the day, couldn't go sit in a restaurant because couldn't, because they were just getting bombarded by. They, they couldn't turn it off. They could not turn it off. I yeah. mean, me, I'm pretty anal about that. Uh, yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I am too. I got, you, oh yeah, you got to. Otherwise, what yeah. the frick? It's like like this. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm pooping now. <laughs> Leave me alone. Don't talk to me now. I have something more important to do. A little <laughs> privacy, please. <laughs> please, but you have. You know, I always use that example with my students. That's funny. It's, 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 it's an extreme example, but you have to have everything in a boundary, and you have to be in control. You really do. Yeah. Otherwise, because this isn't this spirits will like take over your life, you know, and that's not, well, you're not, to we're here to be human form is the guides that I speak to always tell me, he said, it's exciting to do this work and communicate with all these different beings and the afterlife. They said, but remember you're here to be a human and to be a human first. So that, that's what you're saying. And you guys, by the exactly. way, Tim's retired. You worked for the department of, was it? Uh, I worked for a highway department. Highway here department. In, uh, Western, yeah. Western New York. I did, uh, all sorts of road construction, mostly asphalt and concrete work my whole life. Yep. And plowed snow in the winter. So you just I mean, retired. Uh, was it 2017? Oh yeah, yeah. It's been four years. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. time's flown. Hey, I was there 34 and a half years, and I took an early retirement. <laughs> Good for you. So you guys, but, but all along the way, you were still doing the interests that you enjoy, spiritualism. Right. So I want to get back to my question: Was when did it shift with the ch church being able to start using the oh. tools? Well, what happened now, like the National Spirit Association of Churches still won't, doesn't allow it. Okay. Now, the hybrid churches, now I'll say the hybrid churches, which are uh, more of a, uh, they're loose, they're, they're far more loosely based on dogma. They started to allow it. They started to allow like pendulum work and different oh. card readings and stuff. So that started roughly around, uh, I believe the shift started right around in the, in the 80s. And, um, uh, I mean, personally, I don't When really you say care. you're talking 1980s. 19, yeah. 1980, not the 1880s. Yeah, yeah, sorry. that's too, right. Yeah, about the 1980s. Okay. And it became more accepted. Huh. You know, I think, because I remember like some of the old matrons. I, I'll just come around and call them blue hairs because that's what the hell they were. And, because uh, you have purple hair. So I calling me, calling me, you guys, purple blue hair, you know, hey. You're, you're not blue. You don't have the blue. The blue, the like blue hairs were, the blue hairs they, were the ones that used to go, eh, what? What are you doing? They were the ones that were still firmly, firmly uh, stuck in the '60s when it came to dogma, but huh. uh, now, I mean, you can, you know, they, oh, a lot of the churches will allow you to do things uh, differently, which is actually it's a breath of fresh air. Now, for me, it's hard to accept it because I was brought up sure. that real tradition. Mm -hmm. So, but it's helped me. It's helped me a lot because of the fact of the energy work that I do. The uh, and I was trained as a gallery reader, yeah, right from a kid. And uh, also, I mean, like, when I do, like, psychic walkthroughs, you know, Portals of Health, if anybody uh, ever watches, you know, Discovery Plus, I did this, well, I did a walkthrough, uh, a hotel, this, Monte Vista in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, 
and it was like boom, bang, just overwhelmed with like the smell of blood and stuff. That's why I think that training really, like, really uh, polished, I guess, that ability mm -hmm. to uh, uh, read the energy that's left over. And I and I, I don't regret it. I will tell you, it's harder. It was brutal. I remember my teacher used to. I took yeah. Here's a good one. I went back for advanced mediumship training. I've been doing it for all these years. Go back for this training, five day class, absolutely phenomenal. And then the back of the, you know, we're all we're all up in Lilydale. I'm up at the stump, and I'm like, bah, 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 you know, and I get diarrhea of the mouth, and I'm like, can I come to you, you know? And I'm like, the best. I think I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh. <laughs> in, the back, in the back, right? There's there's the instructor <laughs> grading me. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so I mean, it, it it's good, but I mean, it's you know, I mean, I have no problem. I think everybody should read without cards, using you know, using uh, as much intuitive uh, gut sense as you possibly can. But I think the cards are great. I didn't use cards. I'm going to be honest with you. I had, I didn't use cards until maybe. Two or th about three years ago. So after you retired, yeah. Okay, so um, I think it's a good point you brought up. The traditionalists of the church were into mm -hmm. reading the energies and really using your body as the tool, your own right. abilities, and then developing that. Exactly. I think I think it's really good because, for example, you learn any kind of. Let's say I, I do art, and so when I'm learning art, I learned all you know all the different media, how to use it appropriately, and then once you get that down, then you just go hog wild and do your own thing. So exactly. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I pre appreciate the people that were teaching the traditional ways of doing it. Now, when did you start introducing like the Ouija board to your work? Because you guys, he loves the Ouija board. Well, I, I probably started using the Ouija board like right around 1973. <laughs> That's the same year I started. No, I, I, I actually started right. I, yeah, I started in the summer of 73. Isn't that funny? So we were doing, doing the Ouija board at the same time. Yeah, I would say that uh, introduced it into what I do uh, five years ago. Okay. Because up in, uh, there was so much pushback on, on Ouija boards. It was really? crazy. And yeah, we do know what I'm talking about. It's like, wait a minute. It's like, come on. And I would go on paranormal investigations. I'd pack a Ouija board. And they were like, if you take that out, you're out of here. You're out of here. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, you're using pendulums. You're using talisman rods. You're, you're using... Basically, you're using a, a recorder to get voices. What do you think that is? It's oh, creating an artificial porno. Let's open it up. Let's bring it through. Yeah. It's just, Ouija words just happen to be the same thing. And the, well, somebody told me once, the difference is, is I can turn my recorder off. And I looked at him. I said, the difference is you can turn your recorder off. I can take my hand off the plancher. And guess what? Stuff can still be there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Energy will come no matter what. It's still going to, you don't need a board. Exactly. You don't exactly. need to Yeah. It's just it's just a, a means of communication. And that's the way that I've always thought about it. Yeah, okay. And now I have a Ouija class that's sold out. Oh, um, yeah, you guys, he teaches classes on Ouija and, and um yeah, I, I saw that too. It sells out right. like that. Boom. Yeah, it's so you know, people are like message me. Are you going to teach us how to do it safely? Are you going to teach us how to close it? Do you, you Absolutely. I'm going to give you the history and I'm going to show you how to do it, and guess what? We're all going to do it in the same room, but our clothes are going to be on. There'll be no <laughs> naked Ouija. No naked Ouija. <laughs> that, that's that's a different game. I think that's called that, spin the bottle. <laughs> no, actually, in Spencer's, I saw a, uh, what was it? A what? sexual, sex position. Oh, oh I've seen that one before. Yep. Yeah, I, have to, I need that for my collection, just for shock value. Uh, Robert Merch has it, of course. Oh, of course. Well, Robin, <laughs> what do you want with merch? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us about tell us about your collection. You have a lot of you have some old boards. What do you what do you what do you got? What kind of boards do you have? I mean, in your in I your love, collection, you got quite I a love, few. I, you know what I love? I love old beat up boards. The more beat up I they are, too. the better. I do. Because you know why? Because they 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 show they show that people actually love these boards. Mm. But I got to tell you, when I saw this one, this is my this is actually my favorite. Uh, I, this one I saw at the Buckland Museum. Oh, and yes. It's, it's oh, the Swami board. Yes, nice. And it's got the, it's got the finger. The hand, the it's a hand finger oh, like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember seeing the hand planche 
with a pencil in it, and it was automatic drawing. Yeah, uh -huh. automatic writing or drawing, right. I love that. Hold that I up again to the camera so we can see this better. Just yeah, hold that up. Okay, so that's are. called the Swami. Uh, the is, numbers are split from top and bottom. We got the right. we got the zodiac signs. Yes, no, yep. and a few other little salutations on the side. What do those things say? I can't really read them. Hello, goodbye, or what? Hello, goodbye. Yeah, sage of definitely. I like that one. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you got some things like that, that to say. Will, will Karen and I share an alcoholic libation? And play with the Ouija board at the para, at the uh, Michigan Paracon. Ooh, maybe. My yeah, answer, but, I would go to no because I won't drink and do the board. <laughs> okay, we'll do it before the board. That's what that's what it is. Or, or we will have. <clears throat> we will, yeah. After the board, then we'll have a celebration. We'll have a libation together. Um, <clears throat> we'll have something. We'll have a little something. But you know what I love? I love, like I said, the older boards. And yeah. this. This one, actually, I bought, I got three boards for $60. Oh, that's a and, steal. That's a good job. This is this is what I got. This is one of them. I always wanted yep. this one. What I love about this one is that you can see it's worn. And, if you know, in the in the light, you can actually see all the, the scratches from, from the legs. Okay. And it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, yeah. I have another one. I have that actually, board, too. I have another one that's cut, like, right here. Oh. Cut this off? Fantastic. It's cut off because somebody went and used it as a shelf in a cabinet. <laughs> oh my gosh! What a story has to tell. But it's missing some letters. <laughs> it's, it's actually it's a, no actually it, no it's right right it's just along the oh, letter Oh okay, line. so you can still use it. Okay, but I love those because you know what? Again, people, this these these are things that are not like collectors uh, like bought them and put them off to the side. These are things that are actually used by believers, and that's what I love. But oh, wait a minute! Here's one I love. This okay. One I love. This is my. This is the. See this one? Oh, oh, this? oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Another mystic board. Okay, very cool. You know I, but you know, I, you know why I love this one? Because of, uh, yeah, can, checkers on the back. Not only that, but it's a lap table, so I can eat my lunch, play checkers, and I can contact. My grandparents on there. You guys, oh, in the, the 40s, uh, in the 40s, they did a lot of that on the boards. The 40s, they yeah. were doing that. That was when they introduced. I have several, I have several of them with, with the checkers. Me too. This is, a, this is the first one that I bought that had the checkers on it. And when it, I always remember when it came in, I didn't know I didn't know it had checkers on the back. I went and I looked. I went, oh my God, I got the wrong board. Cause that, <laughs> that you see? <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 I wanted a Ouija board. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. You guys, um, I think it's a Crystal Gazer has the checkerboard I, right, on the I back. Have, yeah, the, I have that in my in the collection out in the other on the other on the other side of, of the laptop where all the all the real haunted stuff is. You guys, he is a collector big time of what haunted and unusual items too, in, yes. in addition to Ouija boards. That makes sense why he loves this. Oh, there's our swami. Well, this it. is the one I used in uh, Portals to Hell. Uh, that was and, that's the old one too, right? That's not the new yeah. one. Yeah, this I, is the old one. Yep. It's the original. Yep. And uh, I'll always remember, uh, which oh god, Jack Osborne looking down, going, "Did you see the address six? Yeah, six six. six. He he loved it. That he <laughs> loved. But it was funny because now I have this in a backpack. You got to understand, I have this in a backpack. It's on my carry on. Oh, <laughs> my! I, I I carry mine on too. I my, my oh. boards are the carry on always. The, the best one was I'm watching my pack go through the X-ray and it goes in, goes out. Oh, goes goes in again, goes out, and then finally goes in. And, and I see the guy just kind of looking at me. It's like, what do you got like, in there, sir? <laughs> but yes, I this one I and I specifically took this one. Because I just liked it had a good vibe to it, and when and when I go and I want to use a board, I mean I've got big boards down here for like you know I can put like six people on a board on one of them. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I like this board is it just like talk to me. Uh, I have I have them set up on one of my cabinets, and my gaze just came to this one, mm. and I and I kind of looked over and I says, are, "Are you the one that wants to go with me?" And it just felt so right, and I dug around, I. Got the right the planche for it and brought it out and then I 
put my hand on it, and it just felt right. It just felt good. And we got some good stuff with it. Actually, you don't see a lot of it on the show. Of course, you know, they edited it out. Yeah. But we did get some good stuff with this one. With Jack using it, who used it with you? Uh, Kat and both of them did. Oh, okay, they both did. Okay, good. Uh, both Jack and Kat. Yeah, and I know Jack's both. intrigued with that. I hear, hear about that all the time from merch. He's funny. He's a good guy. Now, I like, that, I like that board. I have the new one, too. Did you get the new one as well? No. No, I don't have the new one yet. Uh, but I have to get I have to get some more boards because, uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I got 70 boards. But, so uh, you have more boards than me. <laughs> I, 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 uh, wow, you've really I been collecting. To, I, what I have to do is I have to buy some more. I have to get some more planchettes because of the fact that I have the board, but I don't have. And the, the next class I'm teaching will have 13 tables. We're going to have 13 tables. So we'll have uh, two people at a table. And uh, so I have to make it. I have to make sure I do have enough. Well, let me let me show what you can use for planchettes. Um, I use all the time. I use the old CDs. Yep. These work wonderfully because you can see through them. And look at this. I even take like this is a pizza box thing. It's actually on one of my gluten free pizzas, you guys. Mm -hmm. And um, you just put it on here, and you can put your letters and do it do it like this, or you can make it into a pendulum board. I do this all the time. See, I love now now Buckland loved round boards, and I knew I knew the late Ray Buckland. And uh, he taught me with the round board. And he showed me Very the difference. Cool. And how he, when he designed his board, which is on Lucite, mm -hmm. and it's great. Uh, and how he just put it, you know, he had like a little, like a little star planche with, you know, a circle in it. And he's like, okay, Tim, what you want to do is this and this and this. And he goes, your hand and your body will actually sway a lot easier. And you're going to get a better result. And how true that is, with a round board, you just sway. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, I sway with this with the square board. I, when I teach people, I get on top above it, and I say, just follow the movement with your body like this. And I find yes. that when you do that, you start to feel that subtle. This is what I teach in my classes, too. It's so funny. We haven't talked about that before. But I hear, mm -hmm. now here's another round board I have. I'll show you. Um, the Ask the Universal Channel Board. One of my friends, Linda, makes these. Um, Those are nice. Yep. You know, this is one of my traveling boards. But see, you can also do you could do the planchette. I mean, excuse me, the um, you know, read it with a, a pendulum or something. Yep. But this is a really easy one. One finger on it, and I can use this by myself, you guys, or with a partner. It's really fun. Maybe I'll bring this that, one. We can use this one at Michigan Paracon. Did you know that? Did you know that the number one question I get is, and this is influenced by influenced by Hollywood. Yeah. Is it safe to use the board by yourself? Of I course, know, why? I get that a lot, Because too. of The Exorcist, uh, the movie. And I, my my answer always is, well, yeah, it's it's. but just take your precautions, understand it, use your common sense, open and close it, you're all set. And I said, I, I, my answer would be, is it safe to drive your car by yourself? I mean, you got to take yeah. all your precautions, pay attention, you know, same well, thing. I, have to, I, I don't know if I told you about this one. This is... <laughs> it's a full board. It's a full board here. Oh yeah, that's from the fifties. It looks like fifties, sixties, maybe. And I was at a, I was at a, uh, a neat little uh, psychic event, and this little old, this little old lady who's a medium, come walking up to me, and she says, "I've got a board that you don't have." And I said, "What?" She goes, "This board was left leaning against my front door." Oh. And. The planche is coated in salt. What? I said, really? So that means that it was something new yeah, happened. right. Well, I said, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. <laughs> and she was not one to miss, to miss a deal, so she grabbed it. And yeah, here it is. This is the planchette. I have it in, I keep it in plastic. And the reason I know it's salt is I put my tongue on it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. This is this is the this is the planchette, and I mean I love that because of the fact it's 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 a crossover piece. It's a crossover piece from my collection of Ouija boards, but it's also in the realm of haunted objects, mm. and that's why I love it so much because this has a backstory to it. And I that's you know I can have all the pieces I want, but if it doesn't have a backstory to it, it's just a piece. It That's doesn't interesting. Have, it means, means nothing to me. I see. And you have to have a backstory. I get it. You that makes to, sense. You have to try to, you know, otherwise, you know what, you can buy this stuff on eBay. Really, if you think about it. You just go buy it on eBay. You know, what's the, what's the sense of it? If you don't know the person you're getting it from, or if they, if, you know, somebody sends me, I, I get, 
I get stuff in the mail all the time. My old mail lady, I felt sorry for her. Because she'd walk in and she'd have like the, bo- the board. She'd go, what did you buy now? And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't want to tell her. You know, I didn't want to tell her what it was. I go, oh, board game, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, make something up. And because uh, I know if she ever found out, she'd never like... Drop my mail off She stopped again. delivering to your house. Well, you know what? You're going to love our museum at Michigan Paracon, Tim. Oh, I love the last one. Well, this people. one is a museum of people who send us their boards that they claim are haunted. Oh, yeah. I oh, do. it's going to be bitching. Wait till you see it. So, you guys, we're going to be at Michigan Paracon in August this year. I think it's August, what, 24th, 25th, 25th, 26th, 27th? I Somewhere forget. on there, yeah. Yeah, I'll be that here weekend, yeah. on that Tuesday. But he's teaching a class, you guys, a course on the art of seance. It's sold out already. Um, but we'll be there together. I, and we are doing, the Talking Board Historical Society is doing our huge museum of haunted yep. boards. And then also we're, we have Ouija planchette, you guys, from Salem, Massachusetts. It's, oh, it's huge. That's, that's going to be great. It's going to be great. So, yeah, come out and hang out with us. I'm going to be, I'm going to be vibrating like a little schoolgirl. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I to see that so this time, listen, you and I are sitting down and using the Ouija board. We really are. Yeah, I will. I definitely will because, well, last time I had the, I, I, I had the, drunk, uh, I had the drunk gallery, the 9 o'clock gallery. Oh. So on a Saturday night, it was really tough, you know, and those are, that takes a lot out of you. And I knew that. I knew that I had to be on that. I knew I had to be on the tram at 5 a.m. So it was like, no, I don't think we're going to be doing much. But definitely Friday night, I think we're going to take the time and let's do the board. Good. Let's do Yeah, he's he does gallery readings too. So that's good you're not doing it this time around. So That's going to be great. Yeah, now, it's going to be a lot I'm, of fun. I'm, I'm, going to be, I'm going to wake up and go, oh, oh, this is great. Yay! So if any of you guys my- that are watching the show and you're going to be at Michigan Paracon, please below in the comments let me know you're going to be there. Come out and say hello. I want to meet you. And I know Tim, you want to meet Tim. Tim's a lot of fun. And come out, you guys. You're going to meet all the rest of the Talking Board Historical Society me- members are going to come. Oh, I think one cannot come, but the rest of us will be there. It's going to be a great time. So I hope you guys are going to come. It's always a good time. I've, I've been, been there like eight years now. You go. You're a regular there. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm an irregular there. What do you mean? You're an, an irregular regular. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Okay, so um, I, I've got to ask you now. I, I, we're kind of jumping all over the place, but I wanted to ask you, what made you do the whole reenactment stuff with the Civil War? I mean, I know you have this family heirloom of the belt buckle, but what, because you're really into that. What, what, what got you? It's, you know what, it's a natural pull. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, I was probably, I was young, maybe seven years old, eight years old, when I had this dream about being in a submarine oh. and actually dying in a submarine <clears throat> and having the water. I remember, I remember laying on top of like some, not some kind of machinery. I remember I had a headset on and, uh, I could feel the water coming up over the top of me and I looked down and I could actually see the periscope tower and somebody laying, you know, like kind of hanging off of it and. Uh, wow. like a red light and everything's sparking. And uh, I didn't realize until years and years and years later when I saw the movie Das Boot that, that what I was seeing when I was a kid, that was a German U-boat submarine. And um, wow. what happened after, it kind of went and morphed from there into uh, laying on a beach and having a luminous being uh, calling us into the water, like one or two at a time. And at that point, it was like, you know, either you didn't want to die or you're just ready to go. And I always remember that. I was young. I mean, super, super, super young. So let me back up. During the dream, as a child, part of the dream was this luminous being came and took you guys from your death? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And it it, it was, you know, and ever since then, again, uh, could it have been something I ate? Probably as a kid, you know. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know. I mean, it was it was weird because I always remember seeing the movie, and I had always been interested in history. I was a, I was I don't say I was a history nerd, but <clears throat> excuse me, it always made sense to me. Mm-hmm. It always was my best subject, and uh, I started really getting into history. Not only going to like historic sites, I've been to every uh, Civil War battlefield in the East Coast. Uh, I have, as a, as a reenactor, I walked uh, 23 miles from Frederick, Maryland to Gettysburg uh, for, in full uniform for the 130th anniversary, which, by the way, was my great-great-grandfather's route when he got there. 
Uh, that was that was unbelievable to do. Unbelievable. Uh, it just it was very and it feels very very natural. And as time went on, the locations I went to were so vibrationally charged that it just felt so comfortable to me. And uh, one thing led to another, and the next thing I know, I was I, I had been doing Civil War reenacting. I had uh, I started doing First Indian reenacting. I started doing Revolutionary War and the oh. Evil. Oh. When the evil was actually very comfortable as being a long, you know, uh, being a boatman with a longbow. And uh, this weekend at the Forsyth Tavern in Lockport, New York, which is an 1812 location, uh, I'll be doing some 1812 reenacting, which is the first time I'll be doing that. So, uh, it would, But vibrationally, for me, when I am on these, when I'm actually on location where stuff happens, it just it it I can just feel it. You, it almost it almost feels like the ground is breathing. And uh, I was a volunteer at Old Fort Niagara for a number of years, and I had all sorts of crazy paranormal experiences up there. And it was just one thing after another. And it just to me, it makes everything three dimensional. Everything is alive, and it just for me, it's so fulfilling. Uh, I took my buddy for the first time. He had never. I. I, I always took, the guy that owned that belt buckle. Uh, he's buried down in King, King, Pennsylvania. He was pretty. I think he was pretty chewed up after where he died at fifty nine. Oh. And I took him down there to see his grave in King, Pennsylvania, which is a couple hours drive from here. And I mean, we. The minute we got out there, I mean, I felt like overwhelmed. I mean, you know, of course, I'm thinking it's his family. He could feel the vibrations. He was like, oh, my God. He goes, I just feel like it's just like I'm being swept over. He goes, this is like, this, this is like, like, like I'm in a bubble, you know? And we were, as, you know, and we went up to the grave, and uh, it, was, it was really something when that happens. So it becomes a lot. And I think a lot of it is because uh, I do, uh, not only do uh, precognition, but I do retrocognition. Hmm. And I think with retrocognition, it, I, I kind of just can, you know, sit on the fence and just kind of like go back and forth. And that's why I think I can actually feel what was going on in these different places. And, and actually we walked into a, a field hospital and the guy pulled up and I said, man, this place is a little heavy in here. And the guy pulled up the linoleum kitchen. It was a blood pool that was like stained right into the oh. floor, oh, right gosh. in his kitchen. And he goes, yeah, this was a, this was an operating, this was the operating theater right here. Uh, so, I mean, it's really something, and uh, the like attracts like, you start getting the same like-minded people that kind of get the same vibe, you know, Either, even though they're, they're, they're as psychic as rocks, they say, which they're not. I agree, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, because they, when I talk to them, they don't say it a lot, but they'll have, like, listen, this happened to me on this battlefield. We were out there at night, we were walking, X, Y, Z happened. Uh, I was, you know, we were sitting in this house, and I was... I was working on a, a project, and this house had been, uh, you know, a you know convalescent home, an old soldier's home. And I looked up, and I thought I saw a woman standing there, and she, you know, like in, in like post-Victorian clothing, and she just like walked away. So I think uh, I think a lot of us get it, and every and you know I don't know, I don't know, I'm preaching to the choir here. Do I get an amen, Karen? Do I get an amen, baby? I feel that. I feel that. Woo! But I, I mean, it's, uh, I think, you know, everybody has it because we needed it during that hunter-gatherer stage, you know, and for, for humanity to survive, the strongest survive. So uh, it's dormant, and it's just muscle memory. So I think what happens is we take people that have an interest in history, and it gets, it culminates, and it starts to peak, and then all of a sudden, it just opens up, like that third eye opens up or whatever for experiences. And they're not ready for it sometimes, but it just flows over the top of them. That's the only way that I can describe so it. So you're saying because that, you get involved in the history of something and you start to, I don't know, feel what it, maybe have thoughts about that history or you feel the energy, that's where you're saying people start opening up? Is that what you're saying? Or, 
or walking in their footsteps. Oh, great like, point. Like, okay, so this like, is what I this is what I'd love for you to share with the audience right here because the audience here they're they're very curious about these kind of topics. This is what we talk about on the show. Plus, of course, the Ouija board, but um, but also how to work and navigate yourself in the unseen dimension. So please share with us. Like you can give us you know a few techniques or tips. Like this right here is valuable with the history and walking in it. But give us some more of these that might help people open up to their own abilities. We all have them, just like you said. I think what happens is there's a familiarity of energy. And when you go to a historic site and you live there, I'm not just talking like you're a docent and walking through there and I'm going to talk about this or that. You're dressed up as oh. someone in that time period. You are actually doing the life ways of someone in that time period. You are actually cooking of someone in that time period. You're eating the foods. You're, you're really becoming immersed mm. in it. And that's what they call... Uh, time tripping, which is not really psychic at all. It's sort of like a, your imagination going wild. Right. But you get to a certain point where it be it, the past and the present merge, and it happens. It's and, and for like me, what I do is I just sit there and I just take that breath and I just let it happen and I just let it flow and it just next thing I'm seeing is in my head I'm seeing what's going on here or somebody that's there or. Or what's going on? I see people, you know. I see people in uniform. I see people in civilian clothes. I, I see people just going about their daily their their daily uh, 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 duties, and that's just being totally immersed, and then allowing yourself to let go, and allowing the energies to flow through you, and then register in your, you know, in in, in like my, in my case, a pea brain, and it's in it's it's in its culmination of experiences. Uh, when I marched, I marched 23 miles to Gettysburg for the 130th anniversary. The first day was pouring rain, 80, like 84, 85 degrees. We bivouacked at night, right where these guys did. Oh, wow. Where my great grandfather did. Actually, Dang. Right where, he, right where he, right where he did. We were on the original roads, Dang. you know, they're paved, but they're all, you know, they're all still there. The next day. Now, we were coming in from Maryland into Pennsylvania. The next day, we unfurled the colors as we passed over, uh, uh, into, passed into Pennsylvania. And I saw, we're going through a town, and I saw on the clock, 103 degrees. Now, we're all wearing wool. We're wearing Oh, yeah, that's underwear. heavy outfits. Yeah. Yeah, we're wearing long underwear to wick the sweat away from us. And uh, we marched in, and that's exactly what they felt. They exactly felt like that. And we got closer as we got to the, the reenactment field, which was where on the movies, actually the movie set of Gettysburg ah. at the time, we got there and it was just like, just, you know, all it was, all you could see was smoke and you couldn't, you know, you couldn't make out what was going on. It was bedlam and that's exactly what it felt like. And for a couple minutes, I had to like, really ground myself because I wasn't sure where I was. If I was in the present, if I was in the past. Wow. Uh, everybody around, you know, I remember looking over and seeing my buddy, but his face was different. It was like, like his face was somebody else. And it was my buddy standing right wow. next to me. I mean, we had done this. We had driven together to the, you know, to do this. Yeah. And it happens that way, you know? And uh, that's when you know at that point where everything starts to mesh together. And it's, it's, it's a peak experience. I talk about peak experiences a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, people only get peak ex a few peak experiences in their life when it, when it comes to uh, paranormal. You know, a lot of people say they have peak experience, but a true peak experience is where you sit there and go, whoa, you know, where you just sit there and go, wow. Mm -hmm. That was a peak experience because we ate that nasty hardtack and, and dried vegetables and that sort of stuff. That's what we ate. We were drinking coffee. You the slept whole in their way. tents, right? The kind of tents they had? Everything. Very simple dog on the tents. ground. Yeah. Dog, yeah, the dog tents. Actually, we didn't, even, we didn't even pack tents because we knew that we were going to be on the march. So we just slept out in the open that night uh, with, with just a wool blanket. And, uh, you know, it was, it just, it really was overwhelming. It was just overwhelming. It's amazing and, and, that, that, you, yeah. that you did it this way. So let's, okay, so... Um, my mind's going. My mind's going a thousand miles an hour. You guys, this is what happens when I get around Tam. I get really like, oh, I got all these questions. All right, so so let's say I'm gonna take that theory you just gave us. 
And that's really good if you want to get into the history of stuff and, and maybe even get into like your family's past where past becomes present and like you said, they merge. What happens if you go into like a haunted place, like some kind of building or something? How can you take these same concepts and ideas and make that work? Let's say somebody here wants to do more paranormal investigating and they want to go investigate this old church or something. How can, can they do the same thing you just told us about? Exactly, they can. And you know what? You don't have to, you don't need to go into all this research. Now, I, I did total immersion on this. Yeah. You don't need that. The big thing is, is now, did I ever tell you the difference between everybody else and mediums? No. Outside of us being devilishly handsome? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the difference, seriously, the difference is that we listen and perceive and see better. That's the only difference. And by that is not just like we're seeing through objectively through our eyes. No, no. It's the fact that we pay attention to what's going on in our bodies. I, I was going to say, I call it my heart, to, but yes, it's, it's, exactly, this. it's not exactly. my eyes. Uh, uh, yeah. So when, when I do a walkthrough, you go into a location and you just stay in there for a couple seconds, take a deep breath. Okay. And just a lot. And, and I see, I live in the void. When I do this stuff, I don't, you know, I don't think, I don't really care about anything that's going on. And I just let it flow over the top. Of it. I keep saying that flow over the top. It's the best way I can describe it. Mm, that's and nice. what you're doing is you're feeling the energy. Now, uh, mm -hmm. over the years, I've lost the ability to actually visualize in my, in oh. my brain, uh, oh, what comes through. I can't see, like if I describe somebody that's coming in, let's say for a message work, I can't see it anymore. I can't visualize it anymore. Okay. What it is, is I get to, because I've been doing it for so long and I've really worked hard for really, for, for too long. Uh, yeah. What happened was I thought I broke myself, but I didn't. What happens is it's, it comes in through the essence of whatever it is. It's the essence of the photograph, the essence of the person, it's the essence of the sound. It's, it's the essence of the smell. Mm -hmm. uh, and now when I go in and anybody can do this, if they practice, it's just go in there and just allow yourself to let everything just affect you. And what you do then is you don't think. You take your recorder, you have it ready, and you just start saying what you feel. Mm -hmm. What's going on, what you feel. That's it. And that's, that's the way it works. Now, like, when I do walkthroughs, my favorite thing is, because I'm old, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old, I like to go to bed early, you know? Oh, you know, you're up to four thirty the other night. You just told me he's at some no, investigation, no. you guys. So four thirty in the morning, and I, and I know when it, when I do that, yeah. I got to sleep the next day for like 12, 16 hours. Yeah, that was that was that was filming that's pretty from brutal. 8, 8 p.m. to five a.m. That was great, but I was tired. Uh, but you know, you have to be able to go and allow this to come through. And like when people want me to do walkthroughs, yeah, uh, I always tell them, listen, this is the way. If you want me to work with you, or do you want me to just do the walkthrough? Just want me to do the walkthrough. I'm so thrilled. Because I'll take a recorder and I'll walk through the entire location and I'll record everything that I feel, mm -hmm. uh, whatever's coming through, words, names, mm -hmm. whatever's coming through. And it's like, I'm not thinking, I'm just letting it come through. I'm not filtering it, I'm letting it come through. And at the end of the night, or when I'm done, I pull out the SD card, give it to him, say, see you later. And I'm usually in bed by 11 o'clock. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know... As a matter of fact, that was in my contract. That, that was one of the things that, were, that was in my contract. Seriously? For, oh, for that's that funny. Oh. <laughs> but, that's true. That's true. I said that I said to the producer, I said, listen, if I can be back in my uh, my hotel room by midnight, we're doing great. <laughs> that, would, that would be, the, I would want the same contract. <laughs> I know, I, yeah. the, 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 the early morning stuff kills me sometimes. But, okay, that's interesting. So I've got, I've got to ask you now. There's the two gentlemen over your shoulder, the ones from the Civil War. Who, who are those people? You know what? I don't know. I can tell you the feeling I get on them. Yeah, what do you get from them? One one is uh, this guy. This guy over here uh -huh. is uh, I get the last name Anderson all the time with him. I bought these actually because these actually have this these type of photograph charcoals uh, hung in GAR halls, Grand Army of the Republic halls, which were oh wow, uh, which were Union veteran halls, and they were like the American Legion and that sort yes, of thing. Yes, uh huh, and they were probably probably past commanders, but I get the Anderson always with this guy. And I always remember when I saw him, I looked at him, and I was in a antique mall, and I walked by him, and I'm thinking, where the hell am I gonna 
what am I going to do with these big, these big <laughs> photographs? And uh, I went back and I bought him. And then we ended up going for lunch and we came back, my buddy and I, and I found, th whoop, where is he? This yeah, guy. Yeah, everything's reversed on these cameras. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and it's, it's sort of like I had to, I, you know, I had to get him. But this is, this is the guy that talks to me. This is the guy that feels, that's why I put him in this position over my shoulder. Interesting. Because he really feels, you know, like he was a commander. He's, he's, he, he's a protector. He, uh, you know, he, I think I, if you look behind me, I have all sorts of photographs you do. Of, of Union veterans. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's almost, almost as if they, they talk to me. Well, I, I think this is how you immerse yourself. This is one of the ways you do it, by the, collecting these items. And then, you know, when you're talking about this, Tim, it kind of reminds me of psychometry. You know, the whole concept of, of immersing yourself or, yes. or walk, doing a walkthrough and then calling out the names and words. Because that's what you do with psychometry. Interesting. Exactly. The only thing, like, and I'll be honest with you, I suck at psychometry. I can teach it. Do you? But, I'm pretty oh good God, at I'm it. Terrible. I'm one of these people that... Uh, Everybody can do everything, but you can't be good at everything. I agree. And that's one of the things that I'm not good at. But when it comes to, like, these, uh, like the photographs that I have, and, and I have, I, right now in this part of my basement, I am surrounded by memorabilia. This is all Civil War memorabilia. I have weapons, Bitchin. and I have all sorts of reunion medals and autographs and that sort of thing all, all around me. And the one thing i got to tell you is that it almost speaks to me. That's anything that has to do with the Civil War, uh, anything that has to do with, and for some reason, the, the Grand Iron Republic, it speaks to me so strongly and so loudly that I have to, I really have to try to possess it. And uh, huh. a, lot of, a lot of people will think it's like an obsession. And it really isn't. Because, these, because I've seen a lot of different artifacts that I can just walk by. But... When I look at these images and I look at some of the things that I have, I know that these men that really, it just went, this was the most, probably the greatest thing they've ever done in their lives, mm -hmm. uh, to be part of this great, this great war. I look at, I look at their faces, I can see, I have one, I have one photograph where he, he was young in the war and then later on in life, where he took a long gray beard and you can see how that the war may have changed him in so many different ways. And the stories, there's so many different stories. And again, this guy here, I mean, I'll sit there some nights and I'll just write what I think he says, you know, what I'm feeling coming through. And, you know, he'll, he'll go and, and again, it's, you know, I'm going to look at it as a, as a skeptic in a way. Sometimes it's like, because I know so much about it, is it me just sure. going it? You know, sure. and, and, and writing something I know, but it's so personal. It feels as if, like, you know, they talk about uh, the in one of the one of the uh, uh, nights that I was sitting here. He talks about having his shoes, his feet blistered in, in really bad, ill-fitting boots. Oh, would be shoes. surprised and he to hear that. And it's real, and it's and it's and and how he and he couldn't wait to get a package from home because he could get socks. That yeah. was his big thing. He got socks, and when you start, you know. Touching in on those vibrations, it becomes so personal, and that's why I think uh, I just, Karen, I swore I would never collect anything. I got rid of all my collections years ago. And look at you! And, <laughs> and now I just have a different collection. Now, now you're out of control. Oh, I am out of control. But this is what I mean. It's becomes so personal. It just becomes. It becomes part of me. Yeah. And it's, it's almost, almost like haunted, haunted objects. objects. People ask me, well, do you have a problem with them? They, do they act up? And once in a while I get knocks or something, you know, no big deal. Uh, every so often I'll be sitting here and I'll see like a shadow person kind of like look around the corner and go back. But that's it. And it's because I love these things. These, what I have in my collections right now are, are not really collections. Uh, they're, they're just pieces of me. And I love them so much and I feel that even, like, the really crazy stuff I had, like, you know, oh, I have a couple pieces here I can show you. Uh, it's a, I, I feel that, you know, everything is alive. I use that, I use, like, the Native American uh, 
philosophy of everything is alive. And if you think about it, everything is. Everything, everything is alive. I believe that too. Yeah. yeah. Everything is vibration. Yeah. So that's right. If you treat these things with respect and you and you have a love for them, they're not going to go and, and act up. It's when you go and you make them a sideshow. That's when things act up or, or you know, what you try to do is you try to go and just like put a bomb on them, try to go and just relax them a little bit. Because I've had pieces that are, that when they come in, you can feel vibrationally that they're strange, they're different. Uh, they may have a little problem. And, you know, I do uh, a couple things to them and uh, I never had a problem. None of my, like none of my uh, uh, cabinets have ever like e erupted or. When you're I saying cabinets, any... you're talking about the mediumship cabinets, right? All of my cabinets, oh. all my my collection cabinets. Okay, and, all those, you know, yeah. Whatever, yeah. It's okay. Nothing. I've never had a problem with anything, you know. So I think it's I think it's the way that you treat everything, and it's the same thing with all, you know, with with the uh, the relics that I have, the Civil War relics. If you go and treat them with respect, I mean more will find their way to you because they know it's, it's like like attracts like the old you know uh natural laws come and you'll just find the right place the right guy to hang out with and then of course i have it all in my will where everything goes oh so i'm that, sure you do so, so speaking that, speaking of the relics you have have you ever, in the spiritualist church have you ever seen apports okay. have you ever done apportations yourself i had uh, what I thought was going to be uh, an airport come through. Uh, I had one of my uh, my spirit trumpets, and I heard scraping in it. We were oh. going to say, and it's going, shoo, shoo, shoo. So it was going to come through, right. Uh -huh. And then it dropped. Ping! You could hear it drop. So I couldn't wait to the end of the seance. Oh. And at the end of the seance, I looked, and there was nothing. But I could hear it. Oh, interesting. And that happens sometimes. I know somebody that had a piece of quartz uh, up here. You know? But you've never so seen I it that, with your eyes yourself, have you? I've seen, I've seen like, well, the best way I can describe it is I have seen uh, something disappear. Oh. Where we put, where we actually, we put a flower in the trumpet. And I was watching it and all of a sudden it got fuzzy and then it was no longer there. Now, again, I was younger. So I don't know if it's a sleight of hand. Okay. I'll put that yeah. out there. But I can't. To this day, I try, believe me, I tried to to duplicate it, and I can't figure out. It. It, I, I have it never. I've never seen an apportation myself. I've always wanted to, but I hear. I, I could say I know somebody who has seen them, or but you know, I have never personally seen it's, it myself. It's it's just, it's the uh, basic philosophy of the transmutation through matter. Yeah, it is. And yeah. just you know, it it goes there and. It, a lot of times, now I'll tell you one thing that I do believe is it was an airport, but I didn't see it happen. Oh. We were up at the Hinsdale House uh, back in 2011 before it got big, more, famous. Yeah. Yeah, and, and my buddy owns it, so that's always cool. But <laughs> in the one in in the bottom, uh, one of the the uh, first floor bedrooms, they were going to bulldoze this place. Yeah. So I wanted to go and I wanted to photograph it and video it, so it didn't disappear. So we had photographed this, what they call Michael's bedroom, and we're in there. And I'm photographing from all four sides. I'm doing the ceiling, the floors, and videoing everything. We go to another part of the house, and we're working. And, of course, I mean, I saw, I saw an apparition that day, too, mm. which because it was, it was pretty crazy. We go back in there, and there was a silk flower in the middle of this bedroom. Hmm. Now, there was only two of us. And it was not there I, before. Nope, I had photographs of it before. Oh, I, interesting. I made sure, uh -huh. and uh, Joe was with me, you know, my buddy uh, uh, that I've worked with for 12 or 20 years, and it was there. Interesting. So we have no idea how it, how that happened. But it was it was one of those days where it was like nobody had been in the house, of course. I mean, they were going to bulldoze. It was it had been uh, ransacked. It had been vandals that just kicked it in, just beat the hell out of it. And I think it was because vibrationally... I wanted to save it. Yeah. You know, right. I wanted to save something from it uh, so that we could keep it for posterity. And I believe that that was a lot of it. Why I saw what I did and who we think it is and everything. So, uh, yeah, so that was that's that was really pretty neat. That's very that, neat. And of course, that was one of those days. It was just like one thing after another happened in that house. So, 
you could you couldn't you couldn't record everything that happened in that house that day. A lot of activity. That's very very cool. Well, listen, we're coming to the point in the show where we're going to have to wrap it up. It's been such a joy. I know. No, no, Do you no. see how fast this goes? I know. No. No, listen, listen, Sadie well, says no. Well, this is what I, this is what I was going to tell you and, and tell you so you guys know too. We, I wanted you to share anything else you haven't shared yet with the audience here. Now, who's Sadie this? Said, this is Sadie. Sadie. Sadie is from Sadie is from the Haunted Virgin House in Virgin, New York. Oh. And Sadie was upstairs in the bedroom, and uh, they have a video of her arm moving. And whenever they go and they have a, uh, they do need they did an EVP session. There was like a lot of f bombs and swearing and stuff. So uh, the owner wanted to get rid of it, and my friend Dan said, "Hey, give it to Tim; he'll take it." And I said, "Yeah, I'll definitely I'll take her. I think she's I think she's great." And uh, she goes to more places now than my wife does with me. She oh. travels all the time. And this is this is little Sadie who, when I crossed the Canadian border to to go to Flint, Michigan for an event. She was just sticking out of a pack, and of course the uh, the guard, the border guy, says, "Do you have anything to declare?" I said, "Yeah, hundred objects in the back." <laughs> and he looked at me and he starts laughing, and he goes, "I said, no, really, I'm speaking." I really, I do. To him. He goes, "You don't have anything like right around?" I said, "Yeah, right there in the pack." So, oh, little that's say, so but say, cool. She's, this is a uh, uh, this is a really a great example of a of a uh, uh, an object that seemed to be like. Really troublesome, but now is very, very benign. So that's why I, I take her everywhere. Now the one I have these are now I gotta show I hope it comes out because I have I have them under glass. This is one of my favorites. There we oh, go. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold it back there a little bit. You can see it. Yeah. Okay, look like a little well, this, uh, this doll here is a this is a New Orleans voodoo doll from the 1940s. Voodoo doll, okay, wow. And and this came to me uh, through like a couple people who knew that I collect and I was looking for things and they wanted to get them out of the house. And she's beautiful, but she also when I when I looked at her, she has a uh, a Marie Laveau actually holy pin to pin to her, and she has an orange that orange beadwork like a necklace. I see that really long, right? Now that could indicate, and I'm not sure, but that could indicate uh, a Hispanic influence uh, as Shango the Destroyer, otherwise known as uh, Saint Barbara. So I'm not sure oh. the whole history behind it, but I know that this is I know that this passed through uh, two generations before it came to me. Oh wow! So that was something that was really I was really thrilled with to get that. Uh, and again, I mean, I, I know the providence on that. But these over here, these are dolls made from Peruvian mummy wrap. Oh, interesting. And you can buy them. You can buy them around, you know. But I love the fact that uh, uh, they recycled something to me that's very, very holy. And they were able to go and make something that can be, tr you know, can be actually sold, but can be venerated. Now, I venerate this stuff. I don't, these, these I go and I always like to make sure that I, I leave an offering, buy them in my cases. And, uh. They're just, I, I think, think they're beautiful. beautiful. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. It's neat. And this, these are pieces that just blow my mind. I have to love it. But I got I got something here. I've I got to tell you guys, he's going to be sitting on a panel at Michigan Paracon. Uh, it's it's a haunted objects panel. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. That's, I think what it is. Yeah, I think it is this, too. This is a, this is a real trumpet. This is trumpet. a trumpet. That's now, right. I have one that's, a re, that, that's made, you know, recently. This one's from roughly the 40s. The reason why you can tell is because you can see the luminous paint uh -huh. on the bottom. Yep. It's made out of tin. And this is what they consider a student trumpet because it's only one, two, three. Okay. These are only three sections. A professional trumpet has four sections. Okay. Oh, I didn't but know that. This is, this is a beautiful example of one. And uh, actually a, uh, a, a Strega practitioner uh, actually got this and she said, you know, I don't want it. I don't need it in my collection. I don't have, I don't want it. I said, I know the, the perfect person for it. She goes, I do too. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and, and that's how I got this. And again, this means a lot to me because these are the trumpets that they used when I was a kid. 
Now, can you make the trumpets go in the air with your spirit guides? Have you been able to do any of that? I have not been able to do that, but Reverend Jane down in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, she's a trumpet medium. There's very few trumpet mediums left, and she's been able to do it. Yeah, I've so seen, you, seen, they used to do a lot in the day, but, I mean, you didn't know if it was fake or if it's real. You know, it was well, a little bit of both. Phenomena, they stopped. they stopped really uh, pushing physical phenomena because of the fact that there was so much fraud. Yeah. And that's why there's more mental mediumship. There's more emphasis on mental mediumship now. Here's a, here is an original tambourine that was used during seances. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Make, yeah. These would... These would go and they these would float up in the air and they would they would make noise. But what I like it for is I put it's like a geophone when it comes to a, a, a for stances. I leave it on the table and if the table starts to vibrate, yeah, you're gonna get it's gonna move, right? Oh, nice. I love that. That's, nice. I love that. That's an original piece. That's one of my favorites. But here's here's something a lot of people think uh, is like a spiritual. Yeah, it looks like it kind of. Oh, is it to hear? This is this is a, a child's horn. This is no. This is a horn. This would have been. You would have blown in the sand. Oh, this is a horn. oh! But Goodness. when I was, but when I was growing up, some mediums used these. Oh. These are just toys that okay. they used. They couldn't. They couldn't afford a big one. They could. They used these. Okay. So this was one that was passed down to me that they found in the trunk, a trunk up in the attic someplace, and they go, you know. Grandma, Grandma used to believe in all that crap, and I said, "Oh, you happen to have anything like weird?" And he goes, "Yeah, I got this toy in the, in the, you know." I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and I kind of feel when I picked it up, I said, "Yeah, it might have a little something to it." But yeah, I love this one. This is this is great. And again, it's a great example when I teach. It's a great example of what people did. They used what they had, and. You know, know, everything wasn't everything wasn't just like it was on TV. You know, every day. You know, a lot of, most of these circles, these people, these people were poor, so they went and they used these things. That's what's great. Well, that's about great. It. That's great. But, it has a story to tell. I love it. See, oh, when yeah. I told you guys, you're never gonna know what you're gonna get from Tim. <laughs> but this is this is one of my latest things. This is dirt from Ed Gein's house. <laughs> oh my the goodness! Burned, the, the house burned, and my friend Cody actually got this, and. Uh, he sent me in. He says, uh, you know, because I know that he's a collector. And he says, I know that you would really like this. And he knows somebody that, you know, that had filmed up at the location. Mm. And they, in the house again, you know, but where it was is all grown over. But they knew exactly where it was. So, it's and, uh, so it's got a little, little dirt. And it's got a little, uh, little, little something, something to it. Do you, so you get a little and, vibe off of it? Some, some feeling about it you know what i don't know if it's i don't know if, be, if it's because i know the story so well right or if it, you know so you got i kind of like like i leave that one just as neutral i don't know you kind of what you use with somebody that hasn't doesn't know the story to maybe you know just read it and tell you what they get I, what i want to do is i want to take this and i want to take it with me to with uh to my students that's a great Cause idea because I, I have because i have actually i have a little piece of coal from the titanic uh oh. that i put in a box wow and i let, I let them go and I let them, you know, you know, try to give me some kind of some some kind of a reading on psychometry. On <laughs> like I said, I'm not good at it, but the one one of my students actually said with the coal from the Titanic, mm. uh, and again it was in a box. She said if this is something that was hidden for many years, it was dark and it was uh, something from like really like it was tragic or emotional. Oh my gosh! And I always remember, and I was like. You, you can't get better than that. Nailed it. Yeah. And let me show. And I showed you these before. And these are oh. fortune telling cards. I love. I collect esoteric games. I remember. I don't know if you remember. You're. You know. You're just so young and beautiful and everything. So I don't. I don't know if you would remember that far back. But they had like uh, Kabbalah and they had games like. Uh, I know Kabbalah. Prestons, ESP yep. and all that. Yep. So. They had all these games. That's like was like in the, that was more in the seventies and sixties. Those games, but that those cards are from like the forties or twenties. Would you yeah. say? They're from yeah, these, or, or, earlier these, on. Yeah, these are like from the forties, I believe. Okay, but look 40s. at these, aren't they? Look at the graphics. On yeah, these are, it's very cool. They're, they're, you guys, oh they'd, be, they'd be like the today. They'd be modern day. If they were made today, they'd be oracle cards. But these right. are from so they call them fortune telling cards. Very much oh, like oracle. I love these, I love these. but. And as I said earlier, uh, as you guys know, I was uh, I, I had I was filming last week, and I 
<laughs> this morning I was filming in Cleveland, and which is about three hours, three and a half hours drive from here. Right. And uh, when I was done filming, my wife and I went to some places, but we picked up these. Uh, I went to Cleveland Curiosities and I picked up these cards. Look at these. Mm. But what I let me open them up. These are absolutely gorgeous. These are these blow my mind. They're just so beautiful. And my uncle Gib uh, used to read playing cards, and yeah. he actually predicted a car accident that his daughter was going to get killed in. Oh and my he didn't God. know it at the time. But wow. Uh, so to me, cards like this, I love it really mean a lot look at that look at the artwork aren't they it's just oh my beautiful. gosh yes you know you can use these these were cards that were used to you know for divination and for playing cards and i love these and to have these to be able to hold these and try to i haven't really even sat down because they're so new yet you just got I them just, i mean you just got them what today I, I, I got them literally five, five and a half hours ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, so you would sit down and you will try to read them, right? You'll, you'll work with them yeah. too? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. I once, I, once, my, once my brain, once I, once I get out of travel mode and I'm like feeling almost normal, which never happens. I was but, wondering uh, about that. I'm actually going to go and I'm going to work. I want to see if I can work with these because these, these are really interesting. The other cards have already, you know, they have the little fortunes on the bottom. The words, right. And, right. And these, 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 these really, I saw them and it just called to me. And they're they're going to work I, for look, you. They're going to work for I you. I think so. Mm -hmm. Now, Marla Brooks, my, my good friend, my little sister in California, who we know. I know Marla. And, uh, and uh, she has she has her own deck out. And by the way, you card. guys, Marla Brooks was on this show. Um, I she I interviewed her, and she had a really cool deck. And he's going to show to you a, a deck of the witch cards. Anyway, go, you go back and watch it. I can put the links below too, so if you want to watch Marla on the show. But she's a cool. There they are. There they are. She was on the show. You guys, when well, I was first doing this show, she was one of my one of my first interviews. I think I had. Isn't that interesting? Like she's, those, a, she's, she's a ride. We've known each other. I know. We you finish, guys go way back. We finish each other's sentences. That's what scares me. She's but great. Her, I believe it was her grandmother, read cards. And she actually has those cards. And the regular playing cards. And on top, you see the inscription of what they mean. Oh, interesting. It was, and a lot of people, and that was something that a lot of people did. Because again, I mean, you know, during, especially during the Depression, you know, you used whatever you had. And unreal. And she also has like a, a transcription of like what she wrote when she was in trance. Oh. Okay. So it, it was really interesting. She shared that with me probably about a month, month and a half ago. Very and that cool. just blew my mind because that's something that's great. I wish I had something. That's the one thing I do regret. I love having the belt buckle, but I really wish that I had something from my relatives that talked more about the influence of spiritualism. Yes. Uh, what they experienced. Right. How they did it. You know, they, if they went to home circles, did they, you know, did they... Uh, expand on different things. Did they, you know, what did they do? Did they read tea leaves? Did they whatever, automatic you know? writing? Yeah, you would like to see that if they had the documents too, and exactly. boy, that that'd be something, wouldn't it? I would love it. I would actually love it. But you know, that's this is some just some of the stuff that I have. I have so much stuff down here in the bay. I actually have three Rubbermaid uh, totes still full of haunted objects that I ran out of room uh, putting out. You know, you know, I just we listen. We bought a new house. Just for the stuff that I, I could display, and I ran out of room. He has a whole floor just for his stuff, you guys. It's like a museum. It is. You're sitting in the museum, basically. <laughs> basically, my friend <laughs> wants to charge an admission for people to come down and see it. Did, did I tell you that my neighbors? No, but I'm laughing because okay. I have friends like that too. Uh, you, you have mutual friends like like Kelvin. He has his whole basement is his museum, and yeah. he could, he, could, he could charge. And, and merch has a basement. I just have my Ouija boards everywhere, basically. So my whole house is like a museum, I guess. A Ouija museum. I'm at the, well, see that was my old house. My old house I had no room whatsoever. Yeah, that's a problem. Now I just got I, I have so much room and I just it's just filled. And well, you're you know filling it. It's, it's it's passion though. It's passion. It's something that I love. I mean, I look around and I, I see everything that I that I have accumulated and pieces that you know good friends have shared with me and pieces that have sent people have sent to me and I have like my spoons that I bent and you know when I yeah, when, you know when I was working with that, 
that to me is so fulfilling. And I get a chance to be able to, I get a chance every time I come down here just to look at it and just say, wow, this is, this is full of love. This is basically what it is. And if you want to be a true medium and you want to be good at what you do, you have to come from an angle of true love and just laughter and being happy. Wow. That was so well said. Exactly. That's, that's, boy, you hit the nail on the head with that one. You really have to come from a place of love. And it's, it's like, and what the guys always tell me too, if you can get yourself into a place of joy, it's an elevated energy. It's like, that's when the readings can happen. That's when all this magic can happen. We're talking about that was beautiful. Let's face it. In the, in the, uh, uh, Keeler's book, Lilydale, mm. uh, a medium says the best mediums are not the ones that everybody likes. Everybody likes the ones that are showboaters or entertainment or entertainers or whatever. And I always felt, why not be both? Come from happiness, come from joy, make people laugh, and then do great readings. I agree. And that's the way I teach. I teach all my students that way. And if you ever come, if anybody ever comes to a gallery, I'm throwing candy at people. I'm throwing <laughs> Mardi Gras beads at people. I'm doing, you know, and you're like, you want? You want to be able to go? And besides, I'm a very lazy medium. I don't want to go and work hard. So if the vibrations are higher, I'm. Oh, it's really so happy. much easier. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, Tim, where can people find you if they want to learn more about you? Well, I, you know what the best way? I'm on Facebook. Yep. But if people want to check out my website, it's www.timothytshaw.com. And you can see where I am, all my events, whatever, I, wherever I'm going to be wandering, you know. Uh, you know, you can see some of the crazy photos and you can see some, you can, you can kind of see some of the uh, network stuff that I've done, you know, just little bits of here or there. But yeah, get, you know, you can get a hold of me. And also the Black Cat Lounge is heard every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We, we broadcast, well... Next to the dumpster. That's where we're. That's where we're broadcasting from. We're the elite meet next to the dumpster transfer station, and we also have past episodes. I always put them on uh, on my website so people can watch. And I got you can you can find them all over the place. They're on YouTube and all sorts of things like you know that nature. But I always try to repeat them and and just have fun with them. It's a fun show, you guys. I was on there, so I will put the links below in the, in the about the video section. So check that out. And Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. It was our, our my pleasure and our our audience pleasure to have you. You're such a joy. Wait a minute, we got. When am I gonna do this? <laughs> for you, for you, baby, for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! But but thank you so much for having me on and let me prattle on like an old washerwoman, even though my brains are scattered. <laughs> hey, well, thank you so much. So there you have it. Here's a person who is using the energies of the past to heighten his own psychic abilities in the present. What a great idea to try yourself. And also, I think the idea of using joy and humor, as you can see, is very funny, to raise up your energies, too, in order to be able to develop your skills. And I'm talking about your psychic abilities. It's seriously, when you do this, these kind of readings or channel your spirit guides or tap into the other dimensions, to have a higher vibration always helps. So until next time, this was Creative Visions TV. Now get out there yourself and go heighten your energy and tap into the dimensions around you and see what you find. I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.